Good day. Welcome back to my channel. Good day. This is Dr. Ligardo Rabongi Palaka Jr., Assistant Secondary School Principal to the Senior High School Department of Dr. Cecilio Potong National High School in Tagbaran City. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> okay, for this episode, I would be giving you a short tutorial about combining the quality and the quantity because I received numerous requests from my followers students and even teachers to discuss about the mixed method so uh, the quality and the quantity versus method methodologies is the major concern of the subject i3 so i3 stands for inquiries investigations and immersion so this is a requirement for the senior high school specifically uh, among grade 12 students so if you experience problems in the quality and in the quantity how much more in the in, in the mix method okay but before i would start i would like to emphasize that research is not difficult that research is not you know a sort of a problem so what is the problem is actually your mindset about research okay so change that perception and that mindset that research is difficult because research is not difficult actually you will just follow certain steps. And if you religiously follow the certain steps, so there is no problem, right? Okay, so everything is all about your negative attitude towards research. And I actually have had a vlog about developing a positive research attitude. So just check it out. Okay, first and foremost. So can we incorporate the quality and the quantity in the title? So we're talking here of the formulation of our research title. Okay. So let us first discuss that in the quantitative research title, in the quantitative research, the title is more or less direct to the point. While in the qualitative research, the researcher can play with words. So in the mixed method, the title can either be qualitative and quantitative. However, by experience, mostly in the mixed method, the title falls on the quantitative uh, research. However, you can incorporate the qualitative research on your methodology. Okay, mga friends, no, mga ka-research, pero akong natanggap na request na kumari ba ay uh, magtagalog ako kasi masyado daw madugo pag English. So uh, sisikapin ko kasi hindi ako magaling sa Filipino or sa Tagalog kasi I am proud Bulano, Cebuano yung language ko. Okay, so my title ka na at yung title mo halimbawa is Motivation and Challenges of Home-Based Working Students. So ikaw sa sarili mo hindi ka working student. So you don't know really the motivation and the challenges. So paano ba gawin yung uh, instrument mo? Okay. So my focus ka na. You want to know the motivation and challenges of the working students. So yung gagawin mo is gagawa ka ng mga guide questions. Yung mga guide questions ay yun yung gusto mong malaman, gusto mong uh, alamin sa mga uh, informants mo using KII. But I would like to reiterate na sa, sa quality interview, you may change, you may add, or you may delete some of the questions. Depende kasi yon sa course of, or the course of the interview. Yon, yon. Na? So, pagbigay mo ng guide questions, doon umiikot yung interview mo na? sa key informant uh, uh, respondents mo. So, based doon, Okay, so based doon sa nag-gather mo na data, you are now ready to write your questionnaire. Okay, so yung pagkuha mo ng data using focus, uh, KII or Key Informant Interview is sa quali yun. When you are now writing your survey questionnaire based sa nakuha mo na data sa KII mo, 
you are already uh, conducting a survey, writing a survey questionnaire na ibibigay mo sa mga identified na respondents mo, then you are now actually doing the quantitative research methodology. Okay? Nakuha mo ba? So, I would give you example. Okay? So, ito yung example ko, no? Additional example. So, student Anna is interested to study about the major issues and concern in the fish sanctuary of their municipality. So, she made an appointment with the warden of the fish, of the fish sanctuary. She then produced a questionnaire and returned for some corrections and verifications. So, alin doon ang quali? Okay. Nung si Anna ay nag-set ng interview. Nung nagkaroon ng interview, nasan doon yung quanti? Nung si Anna ay nakagawa na ng questionnaire based sa result ng interview niya. Binerify pa niya yung questionnaire niya kasi bumalik siya doon sa fish warden for corrections and additional information. Yun. So, another example. So, ano tayo? Yung unang isa, yung uh, first uh, first example ko yung sa home-based working students is ano yon Sa humanities. So, sa pangalawa is sa STEM yun. Okay? Pangatlo is doon tayo sa cookery. So, student Carlo remembered eating a dish cooked by his late grandmother and wanted to replicate the same recipe and possibly improve it. However, the issue now is patay na yung grandmother niya. So, ano yung ginawa ni Carlo? No? So, he conducted his aunt's for an online conference about the family dish. Kasi yung mga ans niya, iba na sa Amerika, iba na sa Man Manila, <laughs> Manila, na sa so, nagkaroon ng online interview. So out of that conference, or series of conference, Carlo was able to produce the recipe for experimental purposes. Okay. So, nasan doon yung quali? Okay. Yung quali doon is yung nag-inquire si Carlo about uh, his favorite dish na luto ng grandmother niya. No? So, ginawa niya ay nagkaroon ng online interview or conference sa mga tita niya. So, quali yun. Nasaan yung quanti doon? Yung quanti doon is yung, when Carlo was able to conduct experiments based doon sa nakuha niyang data sa mga auntie niya. So, nagkaroon ng experimental research dahil sa ginawang uh, posibleng focus group discussion ni, ni Carlo sa mga anti niya. Okay. So, ganun yun. Di ba? Simply lang. Okay? So, if you have questions, clarification dun sa mga example ko, just write your comments. Okay. Balik tayo. Na? Pangatlong technique na ishare ko kung paano i-combine yung quality and quantity is yung pag-identify ng sampling size. So, both respondents in the quality and the quantity will be identified using uh, determined or predetermined sampling method. Kasi sa, ano, sa quality, uh, pwede pa rin ma-incorporate yung sa, uh, sampling method dun eh. Kahit uh, we're only involving few respondents. Sa quantity naman, madali kasi may mga formula tayo. May slogans formula. Meron tayong different sampling techniques. Okay? So, yung seven formula na yan is uh, appropriate siya kung malaki yung population mo. So, for quality, a standard uh, methodology of selecting the prob probable respondents would still be implemented. Like for instance, yung palagi kong tinuturo sa mga student ko, students ko when I was still a teacher, was yung funneling method. Okay? Ano yung funneling method? Okay. Funnel, di ba? Parang imbudo siya. So, yung focus mo is working students. Nung yung first original example nato, natin, no? mga working students. So, uh, working students. Okay? So, yung sa taas, working students. Sabi, uh, masyadong madami yung working students, di ba? So, you have to, you have to uh, ano, trim it down. Napalitin mo pa. Okay? Sabihin mo, senior high school students. 
Okay? Pangatlo, senior high school student na nag-aral sa isang ganyang paaralan or sa paaralan like Dr. Shinsayu Putong National High School. Yung population ng school is more than a thousand. Napakadami. Mag-interview ka lang, di ba? So sabihin mo, ah, ABM students lang or STEM students lang. Napakadami pa din yun. Hundreds pa rin yun. And take note, quali yung gagamitin mo. Sabihin mo, ah, ah student leaders only ng ABM grade 12. Madami pa din. Nasa 50. So sabihin mo, male ABM students na honor students din. Okay? So, pa paliit at pa count pa, you know, nagre-reduce ka ng mga respondents mo hanggang napili mo yung um, grade 12, uh, AB, uh, STEM students or ABM students na student leader in the same time honor students. So, nakapili ka ng apat dahil doon. Okay? Funneling method yon, sampling method yon ng quali tapos pagkatapos noon, 'di ba, yung interview mo sa sam sample mo na na-identify mo sa funneling method ay basis siya for your mm, your questionnaire. Sa so, ganun niya. Okay, so I would give you the uh, the last tips pero medyo broken siya, medyo madami-dami siya. Uh, I am referring to data collection, presentation, and discussion. So, paano ba ma-incorporate yung quality and quantity sa data collection, presentation, and discussion? So, actually, dito papasok talaga yung focus ng mixed method. Okay? Ito yung highlight talaga ng mixed method. So, I would give you an example, a research example. Na, so, COVID-19 pandemic, recalibrating academic goals and practices. So, fall siya sa humanities. Uh, mas ano ako sa humanities, bias ako kasi I am a humanities teacher. Okay. So, number one is collecting and, ana collecting and analyzing both quantitative and qualitative uh, data. So, quantitative is close-ended yung mga questions. Qualitative is open-ended data or questions. So, ang ibig sabihin dito is sabay mong kinuha yung data for the quantitative and the qualitative. So, you have group of students. Now, you have group of students. Tapos, uh, kasi yung focus mo is recalibrating academic goals and practices in the time of COVID-19. So, you have identified group of students to answer your quantitative data. In the same time, kumuha ka ng percentage or sample sa respondents mo na ginamit mo sa quantitative, kumuha ka ng, alimbawa, 6 or 8 or 10 for your qualitative uh, discussion. So, yung ginagawa mo is pagkatapos mong ma magather yung data, of course, sa physical treatment, ando na yung result. No? So, sa discussion mo is in-incorporate mo yung result ng qualitative data analysis mo tsaka sinama siya doon sa presentation ng data mo. So, halimbawa, may, uh, may table, okay? So, may mga findings doon, may numbers. So, sa discussion mo, is in-incorporate mo agad yung result ng qualitative data analysis. Ganun yun. As simple as that. Okay? So, sabay mong kinuha. Okay? Halimbawa, you have 80 respondents for your for quantitative close-ended uh, survey. Tapos, Kumuha ka ng 8 or 10 respondents out of your 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 respondents sa survey mo. Kumuha ka ng 8 or 10. No? Gumawa ka ng focus group discussion. No? So, sa so presentation ng table mo, okay, in-incorporate in -incorporate mo yung findings ng gina ginawa mong survey at saka ng ginawa mong uh, focus group discussion. Okay, that's it. Okay. So, pangalawa, sa data collection and presentation and discussion, hindi mo sinabay yung data gathering mo for your quantity and your quality. So, una mong kinuha is yung quantitative uh, survey mo. Okay? So, nagkaroon ka ng survey. Halimbawa, is there an impact uh, of the modular, printed modular instruction to the reading skills of students? So, yun yung tanong na gusto mong malaman. Okay? So, nagkaroon ka, uh, gumawa ka ng survey questionnaire, 
na binigay mo sa pinili mong respondents no? na identified through sampling me- sa sampling. Pagkatapos nun, may data ka na. Okay. Statistically treated, nagkaroon ng result. Meron kang gustong i-verify bakit ganito yung result. So, yung gagawin mo is either gagawa ka ng focus group discussion, chat chat box dun sa selected na informants mo or you may ask reading teachers sa school mo or the principal or the head teacher of the English department for KII, halimbawa. Na? So, benerify mo yung result ng study mo. So, ito yung isusulat ko doon sa sa discussion ng, ng findings ko. Na? Like, I would say, 75% of the respondents agreed that the modular instruction developed the reading skills. Data from the focus group discussion revealed that the limited explanation from the printed modular instruction encouraged them to look for additional information from educational websites. Okay. So, uh, based dun sa, sa findings mo, 75% agreed that the modular instruction developed your reading skills. Eh, may misconception tayo na yung modular instruction actually limit the development of reading skills kasi yung mga bata ngayon, hindi na sila inter-reading. So, na-struck ka sa findings na ito. So, you want to verify bakit. Bakit ganito yung uh, result? No? So, kumuha ka ng, ng focus group discussion sa ilang respondents mo at sinabi nila na actually na-develop yung reading skills nila because they are encouraged to look for additional information knowing na yung uh, explanation sa mga modules ay ano lang, konti lang, brief lang kasi we are limited with regards to budget na sa mga printed materials natin. So, ganun. Okay. Yung pangatlong pamamaraan natin is yung tinatawag na qualitative findings further enhanced or explained by quantitative data. So, yung una mong ginawa is nagkaroon ka ng qualitative analysis sa isang phenomenon. Okay? Halimbawa, is uh, kung balik tayo dun sa example natin, dun sa working students, yung motivations and yung mga problems na experience nila. So, yung una mong ginawa is nagkaroon ng qualitative data gathering using focus group discussion. You want to further explain the result. So, yung ginawa mo is yung result ng qualitative data analysis mo is ginawa siyang basihan para gumawa ka ng survey Na? So, you want to verify kung yung na-experience ng walong respondents mo sa FGD mo is na-experience ba ng majority. So, yun lang yun. Okay? As simple as that. Ang pang-apat na method sa mixed method is yung triangulation method. So, triangulation method is the use of three or more sources of data. Okay, so I will be giving you a specific example of the triangulation method using the different strand in the uh, high school curriculum. So we'll start with the EIM or the Electrical Installation and Maintenance. So uh, first and foremost, you are interested because your mother is, you know, uh, her hobbies is into collection of plants. So you want to uh, further promote and support your mother's hobby. So you want to create a, an electrical lighting that could support, uh, you know, that, that, that could enhance the, the, the plants of your mother even during night time. Kasi may mga indoor plants yung mother mo. And you know by reading na ang mga plants need nila ng, ng energy from the sun. So as a substitute, gusto kang gumawa ng electrical Uh, yung lighting yung lighting design no na aesthetically maganda maganda yung design no presentable siya hindi siya nakakasira doon sa interior uh, design ng bahay nyo in the same time promote talaga yung growth ng ano ng mga plants collected plants ng mother mo collectibles pa naman so yung gagawin mo is maghanap ka ng model na no? model doon sa mga uh, sa mga books or sa whatever is your resources, create ka ng similar model and out of that model, 
nag-innovate ka kasi iba yung nilocalize mo, iba yung situation na ga, uh, kung saan uh, gagamitin yung, yung setup. Okay? So, out of that model that you research, gumawa ka ng sarili mong setup pero use siya as your basis. No? Pagkatapos nun, may setup ka na, yung setup mo na ginawa talaga, uh, yung plano mo is pina-evaluate mo doon sa teacher mo or somebody na expert sa electrical connections and design. Na? So, out of that, in-evaluate yon nagkaroon ng suggestions, okay, nagkaroon ng suggestions, yung, yung experts mo, you can have three, you can have three or more experts, and uh, ano yung consensus nila, based doon is gubawa ka ng, ng final design na siyang uh, basis mo para sa ginawa mong setup. Okay? So, yung electrical setup na yon to support the the good health of your uh, of your mother's collection, plant collection, is serve siya as your project for EIM, for research. Okay? So, pagkatapos nun, gumawa ka, no? based doon sa suggestion ng mga experts, yung finished product mo na, na set up is yun na yung result ng project mo. So, di ba? Triangulation siya. So, pwede pa, pwede mo pa din yung isubmit for additional evaluation ng mga experts. So, another example is doon naman tayo sa EI, ah, no, doon tayo sa ABM. Okay? May phenomenon ngayon no, na na-observe ko even sa mga colleagues ko, yung tinatawag natin addiction sa online buying. No? Kung anek-anek na lang ang binibili doon sa online. No? So, you want to know what is really the psychology behind the addiction of your family members, friends, and other people with regards to this online buying. Okay? So, you are using the experience or the situation of your own mother no? or, or sister. So, in-interview mo siya kasi na-observe mo siya. Ano yung, ano yung uh, talagang thrill? Ano yung feeling kapag ikaw yung unang nakamind dun sa live selling? Uh, ano yung feeling pag hindi mo nakuha yung gusto mo? Ano yung impact dun sa, sa buhay mo? Sa day-to-day -day functioning mo? Okay, so based doon, so based doon is gumawa ka ng survey questionnaire kasi you interviewed your mother, your sister, your relatives no? through focus group discussion. Nakagawa ka ng questionnaire. Of course, you're using also um, related experiences doon sa mga related studies na ginawa mo, uh, ginamit mo doon sa research mo. Pagkatapos doon, yung result ng survey mo is pinap further explained mo doon sa kilala mong psychologist. Bakit ganito? Bakit ganito na yung nangyari sa, sa kapatid ko, sa nanay ko, sa tita ko? Uh, bakit uh, ganito yung feeling? Okay. So, yung sagot ng psychologist, yung further explanation ng psychologist mo, pwede mo siyang gamitin to further explain the result of your study doon sa mga tables mo. Diba? So, you have three sources of information. Yung mother mo, or yung kapatid mo, or relatives mo. Uh, initial sources of information, gumawa ka ng survey, another source of information, yung result ng survey is pinafarther verify or explain mo ng, psycho ng, ng isang psychologist. So, nagkaroon ka ng three sources of information. Okay. So, ganun siya. So, I hope my dear students and, and teachers as well that this simple tutorial and say discussion would help you with your... Uh, research in I3 or in the mixed method. So once again, this is Doc Lee and you may, reach, you may reach me out by writing your comments and suggestions in the comment box or you may write a, um, a question in my uh, email account that is ligardopalacajr at gmail.com all small letters ligardopalacajr at gmail.com Ingat tayo mga kapatid and mga research. just enjoy the experience. Bye-bye.